Welcome to Will's Personal Development Show podcast, where I give you bite-sized advice that you can take action on right now, test out and see noticeable results to improve your life, your wealth, your career, your success, your happiness, your health, and everything else. So today we're going to be talking about how to work smarter, not just harder, but smarter, And specifically, you know, there's many different people who tackle this, um, and they usually tackle it from the obvious angles, how you should kind of like use the 80-20 Pareto principle and so forth. And I think there's obviously beginners who don't know this stuff, but there are other people who are kind of more experienced, and they want some fresher tactics. So everyone's familiar with the Pareto principle in the self-help industry, if you're not basically says 80% of results come from 20% of the effort. And if you find that, you can get more gains by just doing that 20% of the work. And then they'll go even further and say that, you know, you can find 80-20 of the 80-20 and keep doing that until you find like that thin sliver of work you have to do. Or not necessarily work, but like the amount of customers, the type of subscribers, the type of customers, the uh, people you want to network with that you just do a little bit of work and you'll get the most massive results from. So that's a common piece of advice. I want to tackle it from a different angle. Um, I just want to summarize summarize that real quick for any beginners on here. But now I want to kind of tackle not so much a more advanced tactic because it doesn't necessarily have to be more complicated to be more useful, but a fresher tactic that may not be as common sense or well-known. And I want to tackle this from the angle of choosing what advice to listen to and how to um, approach that with the right mindset to succeed. Now, what do I mean by this? I think nowadays more than ever, there's all sorts of different people who can give you advice from counselors to therapists to actual coaches to uh, videos you watch from billionaires or millionaires or entrepreneurs to people who are the best in the world at your craft. Now, you get all sorts of advice. Sometimes you get advice in person from your friend. Maybe it's a friend that's a girl. You know, girls sometimes give dating advice. Other people, your relatives, your siblings will give unsolicited advice sometimes. They won't even wait to be asked. They'll just give you advice because they think you're struggling. And that may be good or that may be hurting you if their advice is really bad but seemingly convincing. So the first thing is really have a good mindset of how we're all in this together and we're they're trying to help you. So first and foremost, you don't want to get all you know angry or abrasive or skeptical or doubting at when they give you advice. I mean, have an open mind to at least you know give them a chance to see if it's right. Now, of course, people give the make the mistake of just accepting that right out, right out of the gate. And if it's bad advice from someone who has no expertise or experience or skill, then you just fall off the gate and you take advice that sucks. I mean, we've all had that uncle give you uh, give horrible advice because that's what they think will help you. Oh, this is how you succeed in life and that person's broke. Or, oh, this is how you get girls. And this person has horrible dating experience and their girlfriend or wife is not really that up to par. So we've all had those experiences. However, um, you want to take what Ray Dalio, uh, he's a billionaire behind Bridgewater. He has like $20 million, $20 billion with a B net worth. And uh, in his book, Principles, which I finished, um, he breaks down all the principles for success that he used. And one of his overarching themes is you have to be radically open-minded, determined, and most importantly, a seeker of the truth. Now, what most people do is they let their biases and how they want the world to be affect how they seek the truth. So they don't actually seek the truth. They just kind of like try and paint their own picture of reality. In order to succeed in life, you have to figure out those mental models, those representations of reality that are true so you can best use them to succeed. And so um, to give you an example of how you can apply this, first have that open-mindedness and then you want to like break it down and use that to 
to, to kind of figure out who is the what is the truth out there? So I've gotten a lot of bad dating advice over the years, and this just kind of end naturally ends up happening because people are theorizing rather than actually seeing the reality through experience. So one thing um, that I've gotten, um, sometimes from seemingly uh, experienced experts such as therapists or people who who seem to know what they're doing, like they're you know they're girls who have a lot of experience with guys is, oh, there's thousands of different ways you can meet up and and meet girls in your area. And in theory, that's good. And in theory, you know, it's all fine and dandy. And they live where I do. So technically, they should know my area, right? Well, then I would go out and put this in a practice but where I lived was is an area where there's just not that many meetups I've viably gone to every single viable meetup group and there's really only about a hundred in the 25 mile radius and I've been to pretty much all of them from um, Tai Chi to uh, dancing dance classes to yoga to uh, photography to um, plant-based diet, diet groups, groups you haven't even heard of, like bachata groups and so forth. So when I actually go out and test the reality of this, I'm like, no, 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 no. There are not thousands. There's maybe less than 100. And of those, most of them are very small and the age range alone limits it so that there's very few girls that are my age, let alone girls that are attractive, that are single, that are my age. So um, that's one example of how theory, when tested with reality, um, kind of breaks down. So the next part of kind of like working smarter is what Ray Dalio calls finding the most believable, credible people. Now, what he means by this, um, and he, he explains it in the book as as saying that you don't have enough time in the world to talk to every possible person and get their advice or opinion. And he says that's a complete waste of time. It's not efficient. So you want to start and limit yourself to the most believable, credible people within your sphere of access. Now, your sphere of access is usually probably larger than you think. You might think, oh, it's just my family and relatives and siblings. But now, thanks to the Internet, and if you're persistent and you have more... um, guts and, and you just like put more effort you can reach out to people you know through instagram dms maybe it's like a scientist or a well-established olympian or guinness world record holder um, or maybe even a few tiers down from that that's still better than your family and, and relatives and, and friends so that's one thing that you can do and you start with these people who have achieved success in those areas preferably started where you did or below where you did, you can get some more real feedback from people who have real applicable experience and not just theory. And as you can see, you can mess up by kind of thinking that they have this actual experience, but they don't. Like It seems like a hot girl may have this experience, but they've never actually gone to all those meetups I have. They've just interacted with a lot of men because they're hot so they do have relative expertise in interacting with hot uh, with men and socializing and so there's that subdomain that you can ask them for advice at but it's that slight distinction that you have to be careful with when seeking advice hopefully this helped and hit that subscribe button if it did